And we're live. Welcome everyone. My name is Laura Hall and you are on the Come Shop or Come Cook With Me show. <laughs> yeah, we did that earlier this morning. Um, we were really running a little bit behind this week, so we did Come Shop With Me. But you know, if you followed me last week and you saw last week's show, we're just going to be doing something very similar to those mug cakes, but we're adding just uh, last week we did caramel latte mug cakes and this week we are going to be making the same yummy treat a mug cake but we're making it a blueberry lemon mug cake and it is phenomenal <laughs> i have a sneak peek back here we've got about 10 more minutes for the uh, mug cakes that are in the slow cooker to be done um, but right now we're going to show you how to do them in the pressure cooker so we have a uh, completely we have a melty pot here and we have an instant pot and last week's show, I didn't get a chance to come back on and tell everybody, but last week's show, we actually found out that we needed to have uh, 10 or ten, two extra minutes on the 10 minutes in the Instapot versus the Milfi Pot. Um, just, they would have, they tasted okay, but they were not as fully fluffy as they can get. So today we're gonna make them properly and you're gonna get the recipe. So those of you who are brand new to the show, we love to do in our community, we love to say hello, who we are, where we're from. So if you'll go ahead and do that, and if you are watching live right now, well actually, even if you're watching a recording, you can always hit love, 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 love. And you know what that does for me and what it does for all uh, outreach of our show is that it just gets a little bit more a thumb print, print blueprint for Facebook to say, oh, some people are watching this and they'd like to see the show. So if you are live, please go ahead and do that. Now I know that if you are watching from YouTube, you know that this is a recorded, we recorded it live on Facebook and then we posted it to our YouTube. Eventually we're going to learn how to do it live with this great camera. We'll get there. We're not there yet. But anyway, welcome to the show. I hope that you love the recipe. If you're looking for the recipe, it's going to be posted when we finish taping the show. I'll post it in the very top and then look for some great pictures at the end. So let's go ahead and get started. I think you're going to love this recipe. I know that um, I know that I am. I love blueberries. How many out there, when you were kids, did you just like love, okay, now this is going to show my age, but love those wild blueberries that were in the can when you made blueberry muffins. Um, I think it was a Betty Crocker mix, right? And they had those blueberry muffins, those little, or blueberry, blueberry muffins, and they had the can of, of little teeny blueberries, and I just, I loved those as a kid. I just loved them. Well, guess what? The frozen blueberries that you get now that are wild are just like it, only they're more fresh. <laughs> so you'll see that right here. So we're gonna be making our yummy treats with these incredible blueberries. Now they do stain. I didn't warn you that when we were in the store, in the grocery store doing the come shop with me, but yeah, they stain, so be prepared if you make a mistake. That's kind of why I'm wearing a little bit of blueberry here. <laughs> you won't see it. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So one of the first things that you're gonna wanna do, I'll go ahead and show you. You'll want to um, get your eight ounce, these are the little eight ounce jars. They, they really fit great in the pressure, in the, in, in the slow cooker. They fit great in the pressure cookers. And so what I've done is I've taken some cooking, um, some coconut cooking oil. It's a non-GMO. We always look for non-GMO products whenever we can. And that is just genetically modified organisms. So we always wanna put that, those kind of products in our body. We don't wanna put genetically modified organisms in our body. Um, just like the bees don't really do well with it, neither do we. So anyway, so I've taken a paper towel and I put a lot of olive oil on that paper towel and I made a really nice film on the inside of the mug. And you wanna do that because if you don't, it's gonna stick when you actually wanna to start to eat these wonderful treats. So you wanna do as best that you can. Now some people like to use butter, but I'm not gonna use butter because, um, well, those are extra calories that we, we're really trying to cook a little more healthy. So, all right, so we're gonna start off with, I'm gonna do the whey, the, the full meal replacement uh, blueberry mug cake in this one. So let's go ahead and get started with it. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is you wanna get some almond milk. Now you can use coconut milk, whatever one is your favorite, and you can actually even use water if you'd like to. It's, it's really an option. 
But I went ahead and I've got this, um, I got the Elmhurst Unsweetened Milk and Almonds, and I like this one. I love the coconut milk too. In fact, I was so low on this one, a couple of those that are in that particular one have the, co have the um, coconut milk in it. But you want to start off with, you're going to use four ounces total. I start off with three ounces to begin with in the, in the cup. And we learned last week when we made these, it's so much easier if you put a little liquid in the bottom first before you put it in your protein or your flour, whichever one you're going to be making. But you'll get to see both uh, opportunities here. So we're starting off with three ounces. And then we're going to go ahead and just to have a few blueberries in the bottom, let those go down in there. And I'm going to go ahead and put in um, my baking powder. We're going to have, have a, a baking powder. We have a teaspoon of baking powder. And then we have an eighth of a teaspoon of pink Himalayan salt. And we're going to go ahead and put in, even though this is a French vanilla that I'm using, I like it just to have a little bit extra. So we have an eighth of a teaspoon, just a little bit of cinnamon. I'll show it to you. We just have some organic ground cinnamon. And then we have an eighth of a teaspoon of ground organic ginger. Okay? Now, what is really going to make this pop so well, it's so great, is I have, we're going to use our, um, our lemon oil, essential oil, our lemon essential oil. We're going to use four drops. So, one, two, three, and four. Yummy! This is so good. Make sure if you're using, if you're not using our products, you want to use one that's, one that you can ingest, right? Obviously. So, I've just got ours here. And then I've gone ahead and I've taken our Meyer lemons and I've gone ahead and grated it. So I did that already. We have a nice little bowl here. We're gonna use an eighth of a teaspoon and take that grated Meyer lemon rind, put it in, and now we're ready to add in the shake. So for the traditional whey protein, we're gonna be using the French Vanilla Isoline Pro. And if you, can, if you don't have this particular way, you can just use whatever you use. Um, it will work perfectly. Well, I would assume it will work perfectly. I don't use any other whey protein, so I wouldn't know. So you're gonna have to take it a little bit at a time to get it started and use your fork to start mixing this around. That's kind of why you save that extra ounce when you get to the top, you might need that extra ounce of liquid. Okay, time to add a little bit more. This is the longest part of making these, actually, just getting the ingredients. It takes more time to do this than it actually takes to, to make them in the, in the pots. Unless, of course, you're doing the slow cooker. Because that slow cooker has been on for an hour and a half. And we have just about 10, like I said, 10 more minutes left. Um, two hours was just a little bit too long on high, so we've just got a little bit more time left on that one. And if you don't have a high feature, you'll, do, you'll just keep an eye on it. Oh gosh, this smells so beautiful. I wish you could smell this, it's so heavenly. Um, if you don't have a high feature on your slow cooker, that's okay. Um, you can just do a little bit longer. Low and slow always works great for these. I just was so surprised at how wonderful in that slow cooker, how well they turned out. They were just super fluffy. Um, and I would say just equally fluffy. And you'll see in the pictures today how equally fluffy they are. One of the things I learned is, and of course you'll see when they take the pictures, when I take the top off of that, we had a little overflow. But with the, with the pressure cooker, you definitely want to not get to the brim um, as far as your ingredients. You do not want to take it to the brim. And I may have to just end right there because I still need to save a smidgen room for a few more blueberries, right? I think that's what I'm going to actually do right now. Oh gosh, it just smells so good. I wish you could actually smell this. It's so incredibly beautiful. Okay. 
Now I'm going to put in oh, the rest of that quarter cup of wild blueberries in there. Take a look at how beautiful that is. Just so gorgeous. And oh, so uber yummy. Oh, this is such a great treat. Making these for the kiddos in the morning. It's a perfect breakfast. Off they go to school, and it's just a complete meal. I mean, it's equivalent to a three-plated organic meal. So great. But even if you're making a sweet treat, which is going to be the one that we'll do after we do these two, it's just as good. All right, this is completely ready. So I'm going to top it. You want to, if you don't have those silicone tops, now they do make them, and I still haven't received mine yet. Um, but you can get the silicone tops. They work just as great, but I don't have them. So next best thing is just to put a little piece of tin foil on the top, just like that. Make sure you get it really tight around the edges. And then pop it right inside. Now I've already put in um, two cups of water in each of these pots. And I've put the trivets in with the lids, uh, on the, with the handles on the side up, so it'll be easy to pull them out. Um, and we just have the traditional one that we're going to put in here, but let's go ahead and do that dairy-free one. Dairy-free is very similar, so we'll go ahead and take our dairy-free cup. This is the dairy-free one. <laughs> and then we have our vanilla chai. This is our vanilla chai dairy-free. So for those of you who are vegan, vegetarian, we have a beautiful option for you already for the same thing. And this is a full meal replacement. So it's just so great for the kiddos. So again, we're going to go ahead and sit, do the same amount of liquid. Put that off to the side. We're going to do the same amount of liquid. Start off with three ounces, and if we need to, we can always add that fourth ounce. And we're going to go ahead and add in our baking powder. I find if you get that baking powder and the pink Himalayan sea salt in ahead of time, you're doing really, really, really great and it'll blend well with the shake. So we'll get our cinnamon in and our ginger and our lemon oil. One, two, three, four. Okay, and then we have our Meyer lemon. And if you don't have Meyer lemon in your grocery store, you can just use a regular lemon. I just love the Meyer lemon. It has just such a beautiful flavor. I'll put a little more in that one just because I have extra, um, which I can do that. All right, let's go ahead and open this guy up. So I just, like I said, when I was a kid, I just died for blueberries. I, I don't know what it was, but it was for sure something that I craved all of the time. And I felt like it was such a privilege to have blueberries. And now I grew up in the Midwest. It, where many of you are still suffering up there <laughs> in um, fighting the winter winter wonderland. And some of you are loving it because you just love the weather. But I grew up in the Midwest, and in the winters, it just um, seemed to have, like, just so fun to have a blueberry way, you know, in the 70s, in the 80s, early 80s. It's like, to have such a thing, it just seems so crazy. And I know it doesn't seem that long ago, but it was. All right, so the dairy-free, I did realize this when I made pre-made one of those before. I'm gonna go ahead and put in a few blueberries so they get down into the bottom. But I know that this one does require just a little bit extra of the, um, the viscosity. Um, it's a little more thick. So you're gonna need to have maybe an extra ounce or two of your almond milk or coconut milk, whichever one you're using. All right, let's go ahead and get just a smidgen more. That should make it great. Oh, even this one it is so darn yummy. And I don't know about you, but for me, I love to go a little bit plant-based and I love to go a little bit whey-based. I like to do a little bit of both of those. All right, this is really, really thick. So yummy. 
it just smells so heavenly. What I love about these is that there's no, you don't have to add any sugar. It's a complete meal replacement. So easy. And so fun too. The kids can have fun stirring around. And you know, I love playing around and doing different recipes. This one's quite a bit different because we didn't have the ginger like we did last, last, last week. We didn't have any ginger. We did have the cinnamon and we did have vanilla and maple syrup for the traditional ones that are just the sweet treats. But this one, we have the Meyer lemon rind on the inside. And I think it's gonna give it a lot more flavor. Um, my husband, when he said he tasted it, he's like, mm, you know, it needs a little sugar. So I thought, well, how can we enhance those flavors? And so I decided, let me go ahead and add these blueberries. So I decided, hmm, since he said that, how can we add more flavor on the inside of the mug cake? So I decided a little lemon and a little lemon rind that's been grated, some fresh grated lemon rind. I think that is going to do the trick. And of course, adding in these blueberries, so incredibly great. I can't tell you how, I can't wait to have it. He, my husband walked in and he says, oh, is there going to be any leftover for me? <laughs> I think we're going to be fighting for these this time. Okay, that looks fantastic. All right, so we have that one ready to go. We're going to put the top on it, and then we're going to make the traditional ones, or the, the um, sweet treat ones. I guess that's how I call them in the recipe. And don't worry, I'll put this recipe in the, in the right when we're finished with the filming. All right, so that's a, our second dairy-free. we got two dairy-free, two ways. I'm going to get them evenly spaced on that trivet. And we're ready to go for the sweet treat one. So I know because I have them placed in the back, that the one that's in the forward front is going to be the sweet treat one because you don't want to mess that up. So let's go ahead and start with the traditional one. And the only difference between these two recipes is how we got it came across the egg. So for the um, traditional one, we just have a regular egg. Now you can use a regular one egg or two egg whites, it's your choice. And then for the vegan vegetarian, we have the vegan egg. And I've already made this up. I didn't forget to use the cold water. So it's two tablespoons of the egg powder in here. It's vegan egg and then a half a cup of really cold water. So I've already got that all ready to go. So when we get to that one, we'll do that. So we want to start off with our egg in our mug cup. And we're going to go ahead, let me go ahead and stir that egg up before I put anything else in there. Sorry if that's loud. It's sounding loud to me. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take our almond flour. We need, a, we need uh, two thirds of a cup plus two tablespoons. So we go ahead and get that. And then two tablespoons, one, two, all right, and we want to add in our baking powder, our salt, this is pink Himalayan salt, we'll go ahead and add in our, our lemon rind, and now we also want to add in a quarter teaspoon of vanilla. And again, I use an organic vanilla, pure vanilla. And uh, then we want to use a organic maple syrup in this one. And this is going to be a tablespoon. All right. And we'll go ahead and add in the cinnamon. ginger, and our lemon oil. There we go. Okay, we'll start to stir this up and then we'll add in some blueberries. All right. 
The other thing we need is um, a half a teaspoon. I'm just getting this down so you can see it. Now we need to get a half a teaspoon of our almond, or tablespoon um, of our almond milk. There we go. And then we'll go ahead and get our blueberries in. That wasn't quite. Got a little extra juice in there as well. That's really great. All right, we just need to get that nice and mixed. So how much fun would that be to do this recipe with the kiddos? You can make them the night before and in the morning. They're all ready to go. Great breakfast on the go. Or let's say you have a sports event right after school, which many of you that talk to me on a regular basis, you're always doing something with a sport, some kind of track, swim, hockey. <laughs> but what great treats to have. And so much fun teaching the kids the science behind cooking. I love science and I love teaching the kids how to cook. Now, my kids always cooked with me. They always made food with me and prepared and had such a great time. And now that they're adults, it's just so great to we, on our family on our family thread of texting back and forth, I see all their pictures of the things that they're creating, and it's just so much fun. So if you start them young, get, having the joy of cooking in the kitchen with you, and sometimes you know when you're growing up, you, you get some things that don't taste so great, and you're like, huh, we'll have to fix that. And then other times we get to create something, and they're like, that was really good, mom. <laughs> that was pretty much it in our kitchen. All right, so we have, this is the traditional, and it's ready to go. Now we already have beaten up the egg in here, so that's fantastic, and I have a fork. So we'll go ahead and get our, our flour. Now this one, because the egg is a lot thicker, lot, it's, it's definitely thicker than the, the egg that we just did, it, you're gonna need a little bit more of the almond milk. You can play around with it too, you know. Um, there we go. I knew when I did that I needed to come over the sink. Thank goodness the sink is right nearby. People who design kitchens do just such a great job. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get our, get some almond milk here on the top. Just get an extra little, little bit there may need to add a little more we'll see go ahead and get our vanilla in and we'll get our maple syrup in get in our baking powder salt I love having the workstation just set up just like this. It's perfect. And we'll get in our ginger and our cinnamon. And then the last thing we have is our lemon oil. Well, we still have to add the blueberries. But let's get this stirred up a little bit now. This one does, again, that it's really, really, really thick. So you want to dig deep into, into that egg so it's really well mixed. I think that was the other thing last week. I could have, I should have started a little bit more with a little more liquid it, with for the, this particular one because that egg really is super thick. Oh, that's just looking great. Okay, we definitely need to get some blueberries in there. So it's always good to put your blueberries in a glass jar and I would definitely use glass because they they stain. But they are so yummy. I love this kind of, I, when I make this as a shake, it's like my favorite all-time shake, especially as it gets warmer, warmer out. You feel like you're having just such a great treat. I wonder what kind of mug cake we should make next week. And I haven't decided if it's going to be a mug cake. 
I think we need to do another baking opportunity. This counts as a breakfast, but, um, you know, maybe we should do something else. I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe something really special, like a chocolate, something chocolate. We'll see. I have not decided. Any of your opinions are greatly received. Oh, this just looks outstanding. And I think it's the perfect amount, just adding that extra extra um, half teaspoon of almond milk. It's just perfect. The trick is getting all of that from the bottom really mixed up well. That is the trick, using that egg in this. You almost could get a whisk and do the, when you're using that egg, the, the vegan egg, almost get a whisk. If you're patient, it'll, it'll actually all come together this way though too. Patience is always a virtue, right? <laughs> all right, so we're gonna add in the rest of those blueberries that, with this one. Oh, it's just so, so pretty. Put everything mixed in, and that's gonna be it. I hope that you love this recipe as much as I do. I'm so thrilled with how it turned out. I know we haven't tasted it, but <laughs> I am thrilled with how these are turning out behind me. And I haven't tasted it yet, so we'll know if we have to make some modifications, and I'll definitely let you know about it. Okay, so this is ready to go. And all we need to do is put our tops on to our pots, Grab those. Lock it into place. Now, what you want to make sure is you have the tops pressed down and they're in the off position, the pressure valve. And again, for if you're doing Instapot for this, you're going to want to have 12 minutes, set it for 12 minutes. So I need to do that. So I'm going to set this one. Twelve minutes, and then hit start. And this one is ten minutes, and it's going to go ahead and get started. All right. So this is the milky pot. So if you're using the milky pot, it does tend to pressurize a little bit faster than the instant pot, and it definitely gets a little more. I guess it's a little hotter because it gets pressurized. At any rate, that's that's why ten minutes is all you need here on this one. And that's why you need twelve minutes on that one. But again, you quick release, do a quick release. Don't let them sit in there with it steam. Just do a quick release. Pull out the mud cakes very gently and carefully because they're going to be super hot. And you can take the tops off. And if you have additional lemon rind, lemon rind, you can actually sprinkle it on the top. Now, if you're a person who's made jam, I have somebody who follows me. Kim gave me a great idea. She says, why don't you make a homemade jam in the in the pressure cookers and then you can have a homemade jam when you're heating these back up and have warm jam on top so i thought that was a great idea so look forward to probably us creating some recipe like that she, she gave me some ideas of what to do so that'll be fun to to do if you're doing them in the slow cooker again if you do it on high for two hours one and a half to two hours it's going to be perfect if you only have low and slow it's going to be two and a half to three hours but keep an eye on them because the, the, even that low and slow, that steam increases and can really cook them up well. So, I love that you joined us today, and I look forward to seeing you next week. We're live on Thursdays now. That's our new cooking time, and I'm loving that we, we get to come to you live on Thursday. Just loving it. So, have a wonderful rest of your week. Happy post Mardi Gras, and, and now that we're into, into Lent and um, boy, this town, I'm going to tell you, living out here where they toast Mardi Gras for two weeks, it's just been incredible. I can't wait till next year when all the festivities take over and I be, become part of the planning pieces. It was, has been an extremely fun watching all my friends that I've met out here participate in it. So have a wonderful weekend. Please be safe, stay warm, and sending you my love, and we'll see you next week.